Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. It is Francesco here. If you are brand new to the Keep Productive YouTube channel, welcome. If you are a regular, welcome back. Uh, today, what I thought I'd do is, actually it's it's like the night time. It's not the night time, it's like 7.30 p.m., which is, which is a good time. Uh, what I thought I'd do is take a look at the new Google Calendar. And the main reason I want to do that is because I think that you guys may have spotted that it's been totally redesigned. Uh, if you haven't got the little upgrade thing yet, I can send you a link to how to get it. Uh, I, tend, I followed this Google support page and it just popped up, which was great. Um, so maybe that sort of triggers it. Uh, so what I want to do today is run through some of the new changes in Google Calendar. I've been waiting ages for the Google Calendar for web changes. This is something that I thought they'd release when Material Design sort of went live because now it sort of correlates to most of the other Android and iOS apps. Long time waiting. Uh, but I want to run through some of the features, give you some of my opinions of the application early on. Then what I want to do is round up with how to get access to it. So guys, uh, today's video is going to be pretty basic. Uh, I've got the Google Calendar in front of me, so let's just dive in. So as you can see here, um, I've got the calendar open on my access. Uh, as you can see, they've got the material design laid up. So on this on this side, you can minimize the menu. Uh, so you can just have the calendar view, which is really nice. Uh, you've got the mini calendar here, which is like a condensed version. You can skip ahead next month and actually two specific days and everything lights up really nicely. So they've sort of minimized here along this left-hand side. Um, they actually, it, this used to be quite messy um, in the old Google Calendar. And from here, you can manage all of your calendars, whether to tick them on or off, and you can actually delete them or unsubscribe them from here. So I'm actually gonna unsubscribe from Focuster because I need to do uh, the re-video for that. You can also open up options as well. So you can actually change the color to all of the new sort of colorizations. They had them before, but they've got lovely little names. And you can even go to the settings page and add a custom color. So as you can see, I've got my regular calendar here. You can add a friend's calendar from here. So if they've got access uh, there. And down here, they're the other calendars that you do have running. Now it's really, it seems really simple. Like they've done the left-hand side, like really well organized. But the main changes I would say are in the editing abilities. So as you can see here, uh, this is my week calendar. Uh, you can see that the um, you can see that the all day events uh, appear just below there. So it's quite nice, uh, quite a little nice addition. And once you tap on something, right, this is where the real change is. It gives you a preview instead of having to force you into the edit mode. You can see the date. You can see the what calendar it's approached to. You can delete it automatically, which is nice, or you can open up options. From here, you can copy it to another calendar. You can publish the event, which makes it public. Change the ownership, print and duplicate. Uh, uh, and you can also edit the event just by clicking in. So if I were to click in and just go to the edit bar, you can see that this has been totally redesigned. I would say this has just been cleaned up. Um, there's not really anything too new. So as you can see, uh, you can now add uh, the change of the dates, uh, modify the date. Uh, you can see the uh, repeat amounts. And the repeat amounts look a bit more uh, like it's smart. So for example, it says month monthly on the fourth Tuesday. Seem to have detected that and given me a recommendation for that. So that might be a little bit of machine learning right there. You can add a location. You can add whether it's a video, a notification, and also the event color. You can also set the hours as well. So down here, you also have the ability to attach notes, but you can actually attach attach attachments uh, to each one. You can also add a host of formatting options, which I didn't believe was available last time, and also link abilities. Over on the right-hand side, still regular, guests, modify, event. Uh, these are all the options and uh, collaboration options you have with them. And up here, you've got more options, all the stuff I mentioned before, print, uh, delete, duplicate, copy to calendars, publish, and change ownership. So it's really simple. I like how you can get in and out of those apps too. So let's go ahead and create an event. So I'm just gonna create one just for this now. I really like this. It pops up in front of you, uh, and I'm just gonna say record Google, ca oh, record Google Calendar. 
So as you can see, event or reminder, you can set it as a reminder that will appear on your Google Now and also if you use Google Keep too. You can modify the timings as well uh, to whatever you like. It will move in real time, which is nice. And you can change the calendar it is connected to. You can also access more options, but that will open up the edit window. So I'm just going to discard that. But it's quite a neat way. I really like this new window. It does, I can imagine it saves you a lot of time. Um, I tend to go in more options anyway because I like to guest invite people. Over on the right hand side, you've got this new plus button. This just quickly accesses uh, everything at a glance. And it just at the moment says create an event. There's no ability to create a reminder or goal there. So that's something that's still static. I like in the top here, you've got today, which you can quickly tab and it will go directly to that time. I like how everything's clean and just how everything works. Uh, you can change the view as you can imagine. So uh, a lot of people do the seven day view, but I like the week view. You can also go day view. Day view looks a little more, um, it, it's nice actually, because what it does is it breaks away the calendar. So this is my fiance's calendar here uh, and I can see her calendar pop up all on the left, right hand side and my calendar there. I can also see the schedule now as two. So this is still what it used to look like uh, and I can jump into any events that I have. And also month view just looks a little more, uh, I don't know, it just looks cleaner. Like the whole thing looks cleaner, but just looks a little cleaner. So you can go and search for a specific event. So if I were to go uh, Mark, let's say, uh, who I've got an event with on Friday. There we go, see it pops up without even having to do that. So you can search and just quickly access stuff. So the settings, um, you can see the little tab. You can go back to the classic calendar if you'd like. Uh, that's an option only at the moment. You can print the calendar or you can go into detailed settings. You can choose the density and color. So from here, you can make it compact um, and also you can choose the the actual color set as well. So you can see the color's gone a little harsher, but the more modern colors are more palette which is nice. Um, and I would change it to responsive to your screen. So they seem to be in the right axis now. Let's just jump into settings. Um, settings look pretty much the same. You've got all that world clock stuff. You can have speedy meetings too. Um, you can change the default duration of a meeting, uh, like all the stuff before. Uh, automatically add and a video calls to events that I create. That's something that's a slightly new. Uh, you've also got keyboard shortcuts too, uh, which you can access as well. So that's everything there, everything from the language to the keyboard shortcuts. You can add new calendars from URLs, browse calendars of interest, and export and import from here. You can also change the viewing options for all of the setted calendars. Uh, nothing real changed over here, so you've still got the, the panel to access all of your Google Apps. You've got your notifications and you've got your regular, there's me, uh, Google Plus profile. I really like this new change as well. Um, that's one of the things that I think I'd mention at the start, of the main menu abilities. So just jumping back to the week view, uh, you can actually modify the show weekends. So if I wanted to focus solely on my work week, I could. If I wanted to see my weekend, I could. And you can also see uh, show declined events too. Uh, I'm going to have that on though. So overall, Google Calendar has done a really great job at introducing this, although it's a little late. Um, you know, I've been waiting a long time for this one. I'm a lover of the new design. Now, I've been using Google Calendar as my default one on the web for a fair while now, mainly because Sunrise is out. It's been about two years since that's gone. But the application now has just gotten a bit more responsive and easier to use. So I'm happy with the change. Uh, I recommend everyone should upgrade and check it out. Uh, I'll include the support information description. Anyway, guys, I hope that gave you a nice overview of the new Google Calendar if you don't have it yet. If you do have it, maybe that gives you some insight into all of the functionality. But guys, I really appreciate uh, you stopping by today. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to join the Facebook group. We've had some amazing conversations in there, ones that I am really looking forward to diving into specifically. And also, uh, feel free to uh, join the email newsletter, which went out this evening. Actually, it's going out in half an hour, but that one will be coming online uh, very soon. So, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure to have a great day. Keep productive, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Cheers.